the ultimate billboard material delivery man. Um, speaking of delivery man, time for fantasy advice presented by FedEx. Hey, that nicely Thank done. Thank you. Schrager's nicely not here. Done. Schrager's not here to defend himself and defend them, the fact that he took the Bengals to win. They did not. They lost to the Patriots. But Adam Rank, you're here. You always yes. show up. You speak to the fact that sometimes you. you make fantasy picks and then whether or not they do well, you, you answer to it. It's not my fault. It's not your That's fault. Not, it's not my fault. It's their fault. I always blame the player, Adam Rank. Like, That's I'm not great, the one calling yes. the plays. It's a fantasy like, People want to get mad right at there. me for players. I'm like, give me the headset. Okay, I'll change this right now. <laughs> All right, speaking of. your team up. Adam Rank, uh, great to have you back at the breakfast Thank you. table. Oh, great to be back. Okay, good. You're in person. We love this. Who's one yeah. player that you think uh, is the chosen one that can bounce back after a week one letdown? Well, I want to talk about Amon Ross St. Brown because I know it was disappointing for a lot of people who drafted him in the first round, possibly, myself included. Is that who I spoke to go with. I'm going off my own rundown. I'm sorry if I've blown that or anything. Oh, great. I, uh, right. listen, I'll, do listen, it. I'll do whatever. Listen, this is I'm running the show. I, this is how I do it on <laughs> Fantasy Live because they'll slap that B-roll on me and I'm like, no, no, no. I don't need B-roll because they need to look at my eyes. Oh. They need to look at my face. Oh, wait, wait, wait. It is Amon Ross St. Brown. That's who we need this week. Uh, last week it was kind of a disappointment. I think they were going with J-Mo mm. and uh, he really spread uh -huh. the defense and everything. But here's the thing. This week against the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, the Buccaneers love to blitz. And what Jared Goff does so well is get the ball out of his hands when he's being blitzed. It's so weird sitting here trying to talk football to Manti Teo. Yeah. Hey, let, me, let me tell you, Manti, about some football. Uh, <laughs> no. Akbar, it's easy. Let me tell he you about defenses like, that yeah. love to blitz. But no, <laughs> when, when they blitz a lot in Tampa Bay, and so that means Jared Goff's going to get rid of the ball. So I expect a bevy, a bevy. A bevy of targets to uh, Amon Ross St. Brown. And with J-Mo spreading the defense, too, that helps. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Adam, let's look at the Falcons. This, oh, this one was cruel this because <laughs> we have all this potential, and it's Cousins. And pay no attention to the man behind the curtain. The odds <laughs> ever powerful. Um, what's funny is that Cousins and London and Bijan – they really underwhelmed, and yet, meanwhile, the guy who always underwhelms, Kyle Pitts, had a touchdown. So they're just laughing at us. What do you think about the Falcons? Because a lot of people drafted a lot of Falcons. Oh, I have a lot of Falcons. I had Kyle Pitts in a number of spots, and even with a touchdown, it wasn't the most epic performance, but I'm looking for a bounce back this week for the Atlanta Falcons. I had a lot of trust in Kirk Cousins. I thought he was going to come in and play really well with this team. Chris, or excuse me, Drake London, I thought could have that kind of role, similar to, I don't want to say like Justin Jefferson, but like have that kind of target potential to go out there and really have some huge performances. Now he's going out against the Philadelphia Eagles. I don't know if you saw it. They played a game on Friday night last week. It was late. Yeah. And uh, Jaden Reed was running all over the place. Yeah. And those, those Packers receivers were getting wide open. So I'm hoping that the Falcons will be able to uh, replicate some of that production. Is there another receiver in the NFC South that you think might – maybe back, bounce back in week two? Let's talk about Chris Olave. Let me tell you something okay. about football here, Akbar. No, uh, here's my thing. <laughs> Last week, they were throwing the ball all over the place, and my guy, Rashid Shahid, caught a touchdown, loved it. All the rando tight ends who are not Taysom Hill were catching touchdowns uh -huh. for the Saints. You know who wasn't catching the ball? Who was that? Chris Olave. And Chris Olave was out there doing work. Like, if you watch the – I'm sorry, I don't want to be there. You watch the tape. Uh, but if you do – uh, Chris Olave yeah, was doing. huge. It's, it's actually <laughs> digital now. <laughs> digital. <laughs> it really is. And uh, But he was so good in the run game. Yeah. And I think when you have a player like that who does the little things, his quarterback will end up rewarding him. Derek Carr even mentioned him in the postgame press conference. So I expect them to look at Chris Olave a lot more this week against the Dallas Cowboys. Not an easy matchup. But I think Chris Olave is up for the challenge. Yeah, we're Ooh. talking about receivers, talking about Chris Olave. What running backs? It was a, it was a tough week. For running backs, what running backs do you see uh, after a rough week one is going to have a bounce back in week two? All right. You're going to make me talk about this. Zamir White. I missed on Zamir White. Zoom. And now everybody, oh, everybody's coming out of the woodwork and they're like, oh, Zamir White. Went. Listen, if you weren't in on Zamir White when the season started, I don't want to hear from you. It's like if you don't like Star Wars, I don't want to hear your take on the Acolyte. You have no business talking yeah. about this. I am sitting here and I am going back in on Zamir White because I'm an idiot. And I'm not going to change my, my pre-draft analysis because of one bad week. It's a weird, Week one is always weird. Like, there's always strange things that Wired. go on. Yeah. So, what I'm looking at is that he ran the ball like 72% of the time for the Raiders. They're going to try to establish a run against the Ravens. I'm not saying it's going to be easy. But you know what, Manti Teo? Football's not easy. 
Okay, you got to go out there and you got to go out with your guys. I think so. And you got to you got to go with your squad and not and not like back away. I'm not gonna. Uh, don't get into this game of being like, oh, I'm gonna go with Alexander Madison now. It's like, no, no, no. We're yeah. not doing this. <laughs> Stick with your guys. Stay, uh, okay. stay at least for two weeks before you bail. Man. He does look good. Anybody else? He's see? fine. Yeah. He's a he's a good role player, and they they were in a a lot of situations where they wanted to throw the football, and I think they felt more comfortable in that week. But now that we're into the second week. Here's an opportunity for Zamir White to go back and be the guy that he was at the end of last year. The irony of Adam Rank Zemir saying, White. don't roll the B-roll, look me right in the eye as I give you the feedback, yet he won't look Manti Teo in the eye as he gives his football That's takes true. is a beautiful I'm thing. <laughs> I was, look, at, look, at the, look at the guns that are on this set. I know, First I know. Off, and then Why do you think look at Kyle there? back there. They say the camera adds 10 pounds, but there's like 30 cameras on his arms. I don't like this. <laughs> I'm sitting out here. I this, left. He lifts. <laughs> I lift a seven iron. That's all I care about. <laughs> Good.